everybody's looking around the Web 3.0 space, looking for the next blockchain to come on the scene that can blow up like crazy. You know, we've seen this happen in the past whenever things like Ethereum came onto the scene or Solana and their cryptocurrencies absolutely exploded in a really short amount of time, which begs the question, you know, can this happen again? And if it does, who are going to be the new players that can come onto the scene that could be the next, you know, Ethereum or Solana? Well, I'm here to tell you today that because we haven't quite reached that level of blockchain adoption where we have the perfect one size fits all solution for everything, there's still an opportunity for new players to enter the space and do this same type of thing again. And today I want to talk about another blockchain that's being launched that I'm seeing a lot of buzz around online and what you need to know about this. Like, you know, what it is, how it works. Is this a new Ethereum killer? Can it be the next Solana? I'm going to give you all my thoughts on that in this video. So if you're around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about this new blockchain coming onto this scene that I'm seeing a lot of buzz about online and what you need to understand about this. So I'll put this article. So Layer 1 blockchain Aptos raises $150 million from FTX and Jump Crypto. So what is Aptos? Well, it's a Layer 1 blockchain, which basically means it's, it's a new blockchain that supports smart contracts so you can do things like, you know, trade NFTs, you know, buy cryptocurrencies on decentralized exchanges, use apps, connect your wallet. Uh, just like you can with Ethereum or with, you know, Solana or any of those other competitors. Okay, so why was it created in the first place? So we haven't really reached the point in blockchain adoption where we have a single blockchain that is fast, you know, decentralized and cheap to use. That also has a large amount of reliability and uptime behind it. And so that's, you know, what Aptos is trying to do. So now let's also talk about where Aptos is coming from, because this is a pretty important part of the equation. So Aptos is basically growing out of an ex-Facebook, ex-Meta team that was working on a blockchain solution there. So if this sounds slightly familiar to you, I made a video recently talking about the SWE blockchain that's essentially the same type of situation where you have some ex-Facebook slash Meta uh, teams that are, you know, creating a new solution with SWE. So definitely check out my SWE video if you haven't already. We're going to talk about how this is a trend here in a second. But basically, for a long time, you know, Facebook slash Meta has been talking about building a stablecoin and blockchain, first starting out with Libra, then that morphed into DM. OK, and now this is morphing into Aptos with a new team that's not, in my understanding anyway, affiliated with Facebook itself. And so that's a really important point when you're talking about the actual technological adoption is that they're not just starting with an idea. OK, they emphasize that in their posts. They're not starting from scratch. So we are the original creators, researchers, designers, and builders of DM, the blockchain that was first built to serve this purpose. And so they are taking these, uh, you know, pro this progress and then creating Aptos. All right, so how does it work? So, you know, the blockchain is supposed to be really fast and scalable and cheap to use, okay? But what, how does the actual design work? What sets it apart from other blockchains? How does it actually accomplish this? So we don't have a ton of information about that, but from the limited information that I have here, you know, on their announcement post and also their website, I'll pick out a few things. So they're talking about being the lowest latency, optimistically responsive BFT, which stands for Byzantine Fault Tolerant uh, Protocol Available. It's supposed to be a fast uh, on-chain reputation system. But here's the key, parallel execution. Yeah, this is a trend that I see happening with other blockchains. Again, we talked about this in the video I did about SWE uh, with the design of parallel execution. So the whole idea here is that most blockchains right now, whenever you're doing transactions, let's say you're trying to trade a token or send cryptocurrency from one person to another, uh, that's a single transaction that gets included into a block. And then basically each transaction gets included one by one into the block. And for that reason, you have to wait for one transaction to complete before a second transaction can be included. That's, you know, sequential or serial execution. But parallel execution basically says that a lot of transactions can be executed at one time. Essentially, if they understand the state, it can be properly ordered into new blocks. So I'll give my opinion on that here in a minute. I talked about that in the last SWE video. But that's that looks like one of their paths forward to scalability based on the limited information that I have here. Uh, on the website. The other big feature of Aptos is that it supports the Move programming language, which is a you know, brand new proprietary programming language that was created for the uh, DM project, is my understanding, which is also getting used on the SWE project and probably won't be the last uh, project, in my opinion, that we'll see actually use this. And so that's different from other blockchains like, you know, Ethereum, which use, you know, the Solidity programming language on all the different EVM compatible chains that have bootstrapped off of that trend, like, you know, Binance Smart Chain, Solana, Polygon, 
okay, that are taking advantage of, you know, those network effects of that programming language, all those developer tools. And so this is doing something totally different with Move. All right, so let's talk about the actual cryptocurrency associated with this, because there's going to be lots of people trying to get on this early. So what is it? You know, how does it work? So we don't actually have a lot of information about this, not least that I can find online. Again, it's not a sponsored video or anything like this. I'm literally just seeing people talk about this and kind of dug in the details myself and, you know, making this video for, you know, educational purposes. So, you know, but it stands to reason that they're going to have a cryptocurrency. So if you go to like their developer documentation and you look at like the concepts and the gas and transaction fees, you know, you have to pay fees in order to use a blockchain in the first place. That's what prevents spam on the network. Okay. And you can see that, you know, if you look in the description of max gas amount and gas price, you know, this is going to be uh, a transaction fees paid in the blockchain's utility token. So that stands to reason that there is going to be some type of token. We just don't exactly know what it is yet. But most likely it's going to be a staking token, just like the other layer ones that are on the scene right now. All right. So the other thing I want to talk about this is the trend that I'm seeing come onto the scene because, you know, there's a lot of people that are, that are waiting for a new blockchain to come out that's got a crypto associated with it, that's going to have new ecosystems where there's new opportunities that can coincide with another big boom of a bull run like we've seen in the past with other blockchains, okay? And a lot of people think that could happen again. So we're already starting to see a trend form with this, even around these specific technologies. So I talked uh, about this earlier in the video, but I made a previous video about SWE, which is another, uh, basically, another iteration of uh, DM or Libra, okay, that uses a similar technology of, you know, tr trying to create a blockchain that's fast and cheap to use. It uses parallel execution that uses the move programming language. And we could even see more uh, just like this, okay? We could see another team use the exact same strategy. And if we do, then what's going to happen? Then we're going to see new ecosystems pop up with new projects, with new opportunities, and people are going to be racing into these types of things. We're likely going to see the same types of patterns play out over and over and over again, where people are just moving on from the next thing to the next thing. You'll see big pumps and these big waves and hype cycles with these new opportunities, because there's always a huge carrot dangled at the end of that to colonize these new ecosystems early. All right, so let's talk about my opinion on this whole thing. It's again, not a sponsored video or anything like this. I'm just talking about trends that I'm seeing happen online, especially in the Web 3.0 space. And I want to give you my honest feedback on this. So, you know, it, do I think this project is an Ethereum killer? Uh, probably not. You know, I would say a definitive no, but I always like to hold things loosely, especially in the crypto space. But in my opinion, it's highly unlikely. Now, could it be a Solana killer? At this point, it's too early to say, but probably not. But here's the other thing. Could it do what some of these other projects did from their infancy, which is basically start off really small and then absolutely blow up without dethroning things like ETH or Solana? That also could happen. Like all these things could be true at the same time. Now, let's, let's talk about my opinions from, you know, a technical perspective and the, maybe the, some of the challenges that a project needs to actually prove and overcome in order to really be taken seriously and gain you know, stability in the crypto space and staying power long term. Because we, we're already seeing, you know, community reactions, you can see from the post here on my screen, basically, uh, you know, people are talking about different, you know, there's lots of layer one blockchains out there with, you know, touting high transaction throughput. But it suffered from major network outages. People are saying, hey, why do we need another layer one smart contract platform if we're seeing new players come in the scene that, you know, say they're going to do something, but then they don't actually deliver on their promises and they have downtime. So what are some of the challenges that they need to overcome? So number one is they have to prove uptime, 100% uptime, okay? Because we've seen a lot of backlash with chains like Solana uh, for going down despite being fast and cheap to use. So the other thing that I still needs to be proved out to me is this idea of parallel execution with blockchains, because this is inherently a, a, a challenging problem to solve from a technical perspective. So like I was saying before, you know, whenever you, most blockchains, how they work right now is they trans process transactions one at a time. So if I'm sending cryptocurrency from my account to another, that's a transaction. It gets included into a block that gets you know added to the blockchain or that block is mined or validated. And, you know, whenever I am making that transaction, like I own the entire blockchain at that point in time, I'm the star of the show. And that's really important because the block has a big database and I need to understand about what the state of the database is uh, before I my transaction gets included. Because if I'm trying to send a transaction to your account and your account balance changes in between that time, then that, that makes things kind of tricky if somebody else is trying to do the exact same thing at the exact same time. Because that's where some of these other blockchains are trying to do parallel execution. They're trying to say, hey, we're going to look at the entire state and they're going to take a snapshot of the state and then we're going to put all these transactions in parallel execution. But But the problem with that is like, you know, if if you're fighting for the same state and to update the same state, like one of those transactions is going to fail. And I haven't seen a compelling, you know, explanation for how that's going to work long term with a lot of these parallel execution patterns. So another use case of this is like if, if people are trying to go swap on a DEX at the same time and the price is actually changing on them, you're probably going to get failed transactions if people are trying to mint NFTs at the same time. 
Uh, you're probably going to get failed transactions. Like this happens all the time in blockchain at times of peak activity where lots of people are trying to do the exact same thing that relies upon, you know, agreement on the state. So I still need to see parallel execution proved out. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just a skeptic at this phase. Okay. The other thing is the validator costs, you know, how that's going to help impact decentralization over time. You know, I know there's the argument, but will the users actually care about that? But as you're seeing, you know, uh, hardware requirements increase for fast execution environments. That means probably less and less people are actually going to run nodes, okay, to run the network. And that means the incentives fall back onto the projects themselves uh, to maintain uh, uptime for the actual blockchains themselves, which, you know, at the end of the day reduces decentralization. The other big thing is the move programming language, okay? Uh, in order to bootstrap an ecosystem, you need an ecosystem of developers who know how to create applications and can do it quickly, okay? So, you know, that's that's one of the reasons that blockchains like, you know, uh, Avalanche or others like took off quickly is because, you know, or Polygon is because you have Ethereum, which had, you know, Solidity, and those developer tools have been around for a long time, had lots of Ethereum developers, and they could take the exact same programming languages and put them on EVM compatible chains. That's basically EVM compatible means is that you can use the same developer tools because they both support the same execution environment, roughly speaking, underneath the hood. Now, same thing with Solana. You know, you could build apps inside of Rust. Of course, Rust is not necessarily a blockchain specific programming language, but it is a programming language that has uh, other developers out there and those developers could be repurposed to, to teach blockchain. But you know, in order to, uh, you know, in order to create an ecosystem of the move, you have to, understand blockchain and then also understand this new paradigm so that's going to be some friction it's not just the programming languages it's also developer tools required to do that um so that's going to be a little bit of a barrier here that i'd like to see how that gets overcome in order for these ecosystems to move out fast but at the end of the day competent developers can learn new things quickly it's just going to take some time for those learnings to actually build up a reach ecosystem for other developers to jump on the scene but this will also mean for developers watching this channel that there will be opportunities uh to create new applications so if you're looking for you know a brand new challenge uh, to colonize a, a virgin ecosystem, then this is this could be an opportunity for you if that's something that you're interested in, okay? So the last big thing is, you know, we're seeing lots of community criticism of like, hey, why do we need another layer one blockchain? So, you know, at the end of the day, like, like I was saying before, until we have an obvious answer to a fast, scalable, cheap, you know, blockchain, until, until the market has actually proven that, we're going to see new players enter in this space that claim that they can do it better because there's a ton of upside potential for the winner here, okay? So there's all kinds of financial incentives aligned for people. That's why we're seeing these big raises of, you know, $150 million uh, because the, the upside is so big. It's, it's a classic risk reward scenario and there's lots of liquidity for people when they get token allocations uh, to try to go after this. And of course, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, if you're, if you're new around here, I'll kind of lay this out. You know, my opinion is that ETH has the best shot at this over the long term with its roadmap towards scaling, especially with layer two scaling solutions. But like I was saying, until that is a reality, okay, we're going to see more players come onto the scene and try to steal market share. And, you know, Aptos probably won't even be the last. All right, so that's an overview of the Aptos blockchain, what it is, why it's important. Uh, again, I'm seeing people talk about this everywhere online. That's my analysis of it. That's some of my opinion. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps the videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty. How can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can sure to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You'd have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.